Hey guys, this is Russ with Cahaba Tunes. I have been graciously invited by Stephen over at In the Bass Clef to uh, participate in the Blue Note 1500 project. And uh, today I will be going over 1530 Utahip with Zoot Sims. This was originally recorded by Rudy Van Gelder in uh, July 1956 in Hackensack, New Jersey, and it was released in 1957. This is the Blue Note 80 series. It was released in 2019, and it was pressed by Optimal over in Germany, and Kevin Gray at Coherent did the mastering. Uh, this is 180 gram, and it is recorded in mono. One of the few uh, Blue Note 80s that is in mono. Kevin Gray just did a fabulous job uh, mastering this particular version of this. If you haven't picked this up yet, uh, I urge you to at least listen to it. And uh, if you like it, pick it up. Um, right now you can find this for uh, right around the 20 to $25 mark, and it's uh, well worth it. Um, this particular issue, uh, again, pressed at Optimal in Germany, comes in a, uh, a nice polylined uh, sleeve, which I don't, I don't believe a lot of the Blue Note 80s do, um, but just awesome how they uh, replicated the label there. With the micro groove and the uh, Lexington Avenue address. As you can see here, we have uh, awesome artwork by uh, Reed Miles. Just another classic uh, cover by him. Just a fabulous uh, record. Um, there's uh, six songs all together on this, three songs on each. And uh, starting off is Just Blues, uh, followed by Violets for Your Furs, and uh, closing out with Down Home. And then on side two, the uh, great ballad, Almost Like Being in Love, followed by We Dot and Too Close for Comfort closes out the record. Joining uh, Yuta on this particular record is uh, Zoot Sims on tenor sax, Jerry Lloyd on trumpet, Ahmed Abdul Malik on bass, and Egg Thigpen on drums. Uh, just an awesome quintet here. And uh, just a record that's really hard to find, uh, an original copy of this, and if you do find it, uh, you're going to pay up pretty big time. Uh, some accounts have said that uh, there may be uh, less than 5,000 of the original that were uh, printed. So now let's go into a little bit of history on Yuta Hip and her jazz career. Yuta Hip was born on February 4, 1925, in Germany. She first studied painting in Germany and began playing piano at the age of nine. Jazz was disapproved of by Nazi Germany, so Hip listened to it in friends' homes and during bombing raids. Instead of joining her parents and brothers in the basement shelter, she hunkered down in front of the radio, transcribing jazz tunes played on forbidden radio stations. She studied at the Leipzig Academy of Graphic Arts before moving as a refugee to the western zones of Germany in 1946 after Russia occupied Leipzig. After the war, she became a displaced person and suffered from mal malnutrition and lacked most basic necessities. She had a son, Lionel, in Germany in 1948, named after Lionel Hampton. Hip had to give up her son for adoption, given her situation at the time. Hip worked with saxophonist Hans Kohler from 1951, tour touring in Germany and other countries. They recorded together in 1952. In Germany, she also led a quintet between 1953 and 1955. In January 1954, critic Leonard Feather heard Hip in Germany around three years after being sent a recording of her playing by a friend of hers. He booked an April recording session for her, 
The resulting album was released two years later. Feather arranged a visa for Hip and found her a piano job at the Hickory House Club in New York. She moved to the United States in 1955, where she spent most of her life. She played at the Hickory House for six months from March 1956 until September of that same year. She played at the Newport Jazz Festival in the same year and recorded for Blue Note Records, again with Feather's help. One of these albums was with saxophonist Zoot Sims. This was her final recording, number 1530. Hip was a rather shy individual who suffered from severe stage fright throughout her career and drowned her fears with excessive alcohol and lifelong chain smoking. She may have regarded playing the piano as a way of making money in difficult post-war circumstances rather than as an artistic vocation. As it became more difficult to earn enough money as a jazz musician, Hip may have decided to take a more stable job. She worked in a clothing factory, continued to play on weekends, but started working for Wallach's Clothing Company in 1960, where she stayed for 35 years. Some reports stated that she was a seamstress, but a later account indicates that she prepared frayed or torn men's pants for alterations. Hip also returned to her first interest of painting. In 1995, the German magazine Jazz Podium reproduced her painted caricatures of some jazz musicians. Hip commented that, with painting, they look at the work, not you. Hip cut herself off from the music industry. She suffered from depression and struggled to maintain relationships. Until 2000, Blue Note did not know where to send her royalty checks. Lee Konitz was one of the few musicians who kept in touch with her until her death in Queens. Hip died of pancreatic cancer on April 7, 2003, in her apartment in Sunnyside, Queens. She never married, but was once engaged to Atelia Zolaire. An obituary writer stated that Hip has no known survivors, although her son was still alive and living in Germany in 2013. Hip's original influence was Lenny Tristano. She was criticized at an early stage for being too similar in style to Horace Silver's blues-based rhythms, having left cool jazz and bebop behind. Ben Ratliff, writing in the New York Times, commented that Hip, quote, developed a style that was lean, percussive, swinging, and interrupted, with plenty of rests, not far from Horace Silver's style, but more low-key, end quote. The Penguin Guide to Jazz observed that Hip is, quote, not as easy to pigeonhole as some accounts suggest. There are extra notes in many of the chords that give them a tense, slightly jangling quality. But Hip was also capable of playing with delicate lyricism and with a rugged, funky edge. Who knows what really would have happened uh, to you to Hip and her musical career if she had decided to stick with uh, jazz at the time. I believe her shyness and lack of confidence really affected her playing ability uh, in front of live crowds and therefore just really scared her away um, from the scene uh, altogether. As was mentioned in the bio, she really relied on alcohol and cigarettes to uh, get through all the anxiety that she faced uh, while playing music. Just a great talent, uh, seemed to be a very smart uh, individual. I think it says something that Alfred Lyon, uh, one of the co-founders of Blue Note, uh, produced Yuda uh, with Zoot and this particular quintet. Um, he knew how to find talent and uh, had a plethora of great uh, artists during this time. And uh, I do think this record holds up uh, against the other great records in the 1500 series. So check this out when you when you get a chance. Uh, I'm going to give you a few needle drops here so you can get a taste of what Uta Hip has to offer. Mm-hmm. 